Hey guys, welcome back. Today we will be going over seven factors you must know prior to beginning any ring training. Gymnastic rings are the king of calisthenics equipment. They are versatile, effective, and have the ability to take your training to the next level. But there are some factors you should know about the rings before using them, so that you will be better prepared when you start training with rings for the first time. We'll start with material and size. When you choose your rings, there are normally two types. We have wooden gymnastic rings and plastic. I've used a plastic version in the past, and honestly, I wasn't much of a fan considering how much harder it was for me to maintain my grip when my hands would sweat. Of course, using chalk can help minimize this issue. But once I got a pair of wooden rings, I noticed a significant difference between the texture and my ability to maintain my grip without chalk. I highly recommend using a pair of wooden rings as they have smooth texture and are easier to maintain grip. If you purchase a pair of rings online, you'll normally come across two different sizes to select from based off the grip's diameter. 32 millimeters and 28 millimeters, or 1.25 inches and 1.11 inches in diameter. The smaller diameter is easier to grip, but it may slightly put more strain on the wrist joint when trying to maintain a neutral position. The larger diameter can be easier on the wrist joint and may allow you to feel a bit more stable, but could increase difficulty during pulling movements as a larger grip requires further grip strength. It's really not something to overthink though, as it will honestly come down to personal preference. I prefer the larger grip as it's helped improve and challenge my grip strength. Also, they feel more comfortable for me to use. You should order a pair that you believe will work best for your individual attributes. And if you don't feel comfortable after testing the size you purchased, please don't settle for it. Just return it for the other size if it will suit you better. Next, let's talk about anchor points. The anchor point is the point at which your rings are attached to. With rings, we can train in multiple locations on multiple anchor points as long as it's secure and stable. It is important to take into consideration though the height, size, and location of your anchor point. When it comes to height, the taller your anchor point is, the lower you will most likely have to place your rings to reach a desired height. This will lengthen the distance between your rings and the anchor point. The further the rings are away from the anchor point, the less stability you'll have as the length of the straps has now increased, requiring you to exert more effort to maintain stability during your ring training. Now this isn't a bad thing and can vary between each individual, their goals, and the exercise they perform. But if you are a beginner and have never trained with rings before, you are definitely going to want to avoid using very high anchor points. An anchor point that is stable and a bit taller than you will work best. Although this won't make too much of a difference, the size of the anchor point is worth paying attention to as well. The wider the anchor point, the more stability you'll have. My main point here is that it can be deceiving if you use a wide anchor point. I used to train under my apartment stairs back in 2017. The stairs were pretty wide, so when I placed my straps around them, there was a decent increase in the distance between the front and back end of each strap, increasing the stability, making it easier for me to perform some exercises, such as the dip. Dips felt slightly easier with a wider anchor point compared to a smaller one, such as a pull-up bar, considering a bit less effort was needed to maintain stability. The difference might be small, but it's there, and can make a difference in your training. For location, find an anchor point that provides you enough room to move your body around, and considering you might have multiple locations to choose from, try to use just one anchor point for a few weeks if you plan on staying consistent with your ring training. Switching between high points, low points, or wide points very often as a beginner will make it hard to maintain and track progress at first. So find one location that works for you and stick to that location for a few weeks before switching points. Let's go further into instability. Before training with a pair of rings, understand that you are going to have to adapt to the instability of the rings. Being that you are moving your body weight around with straps and circular pieces of wood or plastic, you are going to have to work hard to stabilize yourself while performing exercises on rings. I've worked with a lot of different people over the past two years and noticed that everyone reacts differently to the instability of the rings. Some adjust pretty quickly, while some do not. Now try not to feel frustrated at first if you are sincerely struggling holding yourself up on a pair of rings. The cool thing here is that you'll adapt faster to the rings than you think as long as you are consistent. Most pushing exercises and ones that require you to hold your body up, such as the dip, is where you'll probably feel the most struggle. To help adapt to the instability during pushing exercises, try performing some isometric work for time sets such as neutral support holds and plank holds. I'll make routines for this in a future video. Also training the eccentric or negative portions can help you adjust to the instability through range while further improving strength gains. Let's talk about varying intensity. Intensity can be defined as the difficulty of an exercise. 
With rings, there are two main ways to change the intensity of an exercise. One is by raising or lowering the rings, and two is by changing body position. Now for the rings, as stated previously, the higher the rings are, the more stable they will become. The lower the rings are, the less stable they will become. For positioning, to put it simply, the further away your center of gravity is from the anchor point, the easier the exercise becomes. The closer your center of gravity is to the anchor point, the harder the exercise becomes, as you are now working directly against gravity. Vertical exercises where your feet are not planted will generally be tougher since you're working directly against gravity and the instability. Horizontal exercises where your feet are planted, such as rows, are easier to manipulate position to change the intensity. So where you place yourself and the rings can determine the intensity of your workout. It's important to understand this because a common mistake that I see, especially with beginners, is they will attempt to perform ring exercises at too high of an intensity without realizing that they're compromising their form and ability to execute the exercise properly. You'll lose more than you'll gain when training at an intensity that you are not yet prepared for, and this can even lead to injuries. The rings provide you so much room to decrease and increase the intensity of an exercise. Remember to work smart first, then gradually increase intensity over time as you get stronger. Which brings me to my next topic, measuring intensity. Measuring intensity can help you avoid remaining stagnant, help track progress, and help ensure progress is occurring. For height, if you have numbered straps and use the same anchor point, you can measure the level at which your rings are placed for the exercises at hand with the numbers on your straps. Another method, and one that I've used from Daniel Vadnell, is to use a region of your body in relation to the rings. For example, using the bottom of the rings and an area of the body to measure the height you are working with. The numbered straps would be more ideal to keep measurement of height strict, but use whatever works best for you. For measuring distance from the anchor point when performing an exercise where you'll have your feet planted, start directly under the anchor point. You can use steps, some form of measuring tape, or even chalk, of course, depending on the area. So for a quick example of what measuring intensity looks like, let's say last week I was performing rows. I had the bottom of the rings at hip height and was placed four steps away from the anchor point. I was able to perform three sets of 15 reps with good form and now I want to increase the intensity this week. So I'll reset with three steps away this week, increasing the difficulty and shoot for three sets of 10 reps. All right, let's discuss the rings on our hands and arms. When training with rings, it's inevitable that your hands will have to adjust to the rings just like any other form of training that requires you to use a bar or handle. Consistent ring training can take a toll on the skin of your palms, so you will most likely develop calluses. I personally look at them as an indication of my efforts. When gripping the rings, I make sure the palm of my hand covers the ring prior to gripping to help avoid hanging from my fingers. There really is no perfect method here. You should place your hands on the rings in a manner that will best suit you and provides you the most optimal grip. If you're having trouble with your grip, use chalk. Now when it comes to some pushing exercises such as dips, your arms may get irritated by the ring straps. I've personally never experienced this issue, but if it's truly bothering you, just wear a compression sleeve or a long sleeve shirt. Now onto the last topic, when to start training with rings. If you're fairly new to training and struggle performing basic compound movements such as pull-ups, push-ups, and dips on stationary objects such as bars and the floor, I would not recommend you to start training heavily with rings. If you cannot yet maintain proper form and execute solid reps on stationary objects, the instability of the rings might crush your expectations. But no rush though. Spend more time developing the basics on stationary objects prior to performing them on a pair of rings. A good rule of thumb in my opinion is if you can perform 5 to 10 pull-ups, 5 to 10 dips, and 10 to 15 push-ups with proper technique on stable objects, you'll be better prepared prior to ring training. But even so, I recommend purchasing a pair as you can still implement them into your training as a beginner with decreased intensities, isometric work, and negative work as we discussed earlier. Overall, if you plan on taking your training to the next level with rings, be prepared for a challenge. Approach it with a gradual plan and respect. Trust me when I say if you are not prepared, the rings will humble you. Go over my tips again if you feel the need to do so. Alright guys, that concludes the end of my 7 must know factors prior to ring training. If you have any other tips or want to share your experience with rings, let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and click that subscribe button down below for more content in the future. Thanks for watching, and as always, enjoy the process.